Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Thinking in Causation, Level 5, Probability and Prediction. When you're dealing with cause and effect, the first thing you should always do is define the system that you're going to investigate. But in this video, we're going to dig into what happens when you have multiple causes, which leads to multiple effects. Up to this point, we've only been dealing with one cause and one effect. And what happens when you have multiple causes is it's not always straightforward. Um, we've always used this green arrow uh, as an object to represent cause and effect. But in this video, we're going to dig into how this relationship is actually uh, based in probability. And depending on what causes you get and when you get those causes, you're going to have different effects. And so when you're done watching this video, you should be able to understand objects like the multiple causes is in a Galton board or the multiple factors that lead to growth in plants. But I'm going to start by showing you my thinking around cause and effects in a simple three dice game. The first thing we should always do is define the system that we are going to investigate. So the rules for this game are pretty simple. Um, if you get two or more green, you win. If you get two or more red, you lose. And if you get neither, then you roll again. So let me roll the dice. And so this would be me losing because I had two red. Or let me roll the dice again. And this would be roll again because I'm neither getting two green or two red. So now let me take a second to set up what I would argue is the cause and the effects in this system. So what I've shown here is that the effects are your success, you win, lose, roll again, and then the causes are your dice rolls. So let me lay out all the different causes and effects. So the multiple causes that you have are your, are your roll on the black dice, the white dice, and the blue dice. And then these are all your alternatives for success. So let me roll the dice. And so on the black dice, I got a yellow. On the white dice, I got a red. And then on the blue dice, I got a red. And so that would be, if I follow the rules, that would be um, a loss when it comes to success. And so you can see, based on all these different dice, I can get lots of different uh, effects happening. You can see on each dice that there are two yellow, two green, and then two red. And so I have a one-third probability with each dice. So me to, for me to figure this out, it's not as simple as determining the cause and the effects. I have to figure out the probability of all those different cause and effects. And so all these causes are contributing to the success. And so it's not as simple as a straightforward relationship. A good way to do this in science is to use something called a probability table. What I'm writing on here would be uh, what I get on the black dice, what I get on the white dice, and then what I get on the blue dice. And so when I work the numbers, I found that there are seven, seven ways you could win, seven ways you could lose, and 13 ways that you would have to roll again. So roughly half the time, you're going to get roll again. And so a probability table like this is helpful. Uh, one that you're probably familiar with would be a Punnett square. So I'm going to clear all this off, and then I'm going to give you a, a different system that you can try. Okay, for the next system, I've got a simple game called Three Letter Scrabble. I have three bags, bag one, two, three. Bags one and three have consonants in them, R, S, T, L, and N. And then bag two has vowels, A, E, I, O, U. And so all you do is just choose a letter from bag one. So let's choose a letter from bag one, and I get the letter T. Then choose a letter from bag two, and I get the letter A and then choose a letter from bag three. And I get the letter L. So the, the word tau is not a word. It's not a legal uh, Scrabble word. So the way the game would work is I put these back in and then I pull it again. And so what we're trying to figure out is kind of what is the probability that we would get a word that you could play in Scrabble. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video Try to work out what is the effects that we're looking at, what are the causes that we're looking at, 
um, and how all those causes contribute to the effect. And if you really want to dig in, try to calculate a probability table of how we could, what are the odds that we're going to make a word that we could play in Scrabble. Then unpause the video, come back, and we'll share our thinking. Okay, the first thing I would do is I would identify what are the effects and what are the causes. So the effects that I get would be the combination of the three letters and then the causes are going to be the tiles that you chose. And so let me write down all of those tiles chosen and the combinations we could get. Okay, the, uh, the causes that I have are the letter that I choose from bag one, bag two, and bag three. And then the effects, I have two different effects that I could have. I could either choose a Scrabble word or I could choose some other combination of letters. And so let's try this out. So the letters that I chose were T, U, and S. So does that make a Scrabble word or does that make another combination of words? That's just another combination of words. So that's not something that I could play, I don't think, in Scrabble. And so how do I figure out what are all the possible combinations that I could have? Well, the easiest way to do that is using a three-letter probability table. So for each of these choices, uh, choice one is R, S, T, L, and N. Then we've got the vowels for choice two and then RSTLN again. And so what did I find when I did this? I found that there are 125 total combinations that we have and about 29 or 30 percent of the time you're going to choose a word that would be a Scrabble word. Words like um, sit and sat and ran and rat. Uh, but the majority of the time, 71 percent of the time, you're going to be choosing a word that's just another combination. And so um, a simple Punnett square when we're doing uh, biology would be an example of a probability table. But now that I've shown you this, what I would encourage you to do is find one of the ones in the Google slide deck below. You could look at uh, multiple causes in something like a Galton board or identifying multiple causes in plant growth, something like the growth of grass. But all you're doing is laying out all the causes that I have, what possible effects that I could have, and then trying to figure out what's the probability that's connecting that cause to that effect. Um, so that's uh, level five of cause and effect. Uh, it's probability and prediction, and I hope that was helpful.